Today, we're looking at the three new palm switches from Akko, which share a lot in common with the ever popular Novel Keys Cream Switch, but come in at a little over half the price of the creams. So we're going to see if these are a good, affordable alternative. For transparency, Akko did send these out for me to review, and I am an affiliate with them. But as always, it doesn't affect my review in any way. They didn't pay me to make this video, and I didn't get to see any part of this review before it went live. First things first, the Echo Palm Switch is coming at $17 for 45 switches, which equates to around $0.37 cents a switch. Compare that to the $0.65 cents per switch price tag at the creams, and on paper, you've got a pretty solid contender for the creams. And this video will be largely based around if these are a good budget alternative to creams. The packaging here is a new updated cardboard box instead of the old two-piece slow lift lid. It's still premium, especially given the price, but I personally prefer the old packaging. However, I'd imagine that the updated version is probably more eco-friendly. As the name suggests, these switches are made up entirely out of palm, with the exception of the spring, of course. The top housing, bottom housing, and stem, palm. Same as the creams. Currently, there are three versions of the palm switch which I have today, the pinks, silvers, and browns. The browns are a very light tactile, similar in feeling to their Cherry MX counterpart, very easy to glide over but not very noticeable, especially if you're a heavy typer like me. The pinks and the silvers are linear and here are the three spring specs between the three switches. Feel free to pause the video if you need to. These switches are three pin, have a cutout for SMD RGB and have Echo branding on the top housing. They come completely unlubed and the silvers come with a very long pole. The pinks and the browns also have a long pole. The thing is though, it's not as pronounced as the silvers. They don't have a lot of stem wobble so filming isn't necessary, but the switch tolerances here are very good too good. This is what my switch polo looked like after pulling only one batch of these switches out, and this happened across several different boards so it's definitely going to be a tight fit no matter which board you put these in. The pinks and the browns have 4mm of total travel, the silvers on the other hand only have 3mm of travel, which means that the bottom out will be pretty short and abrupt like we saw in the green jackets. One of the main, shall we say, quirks about creams is that it's a standard practice to break in the switch. In a nutshell, the more you press the switch, supposedly the smoother it becomes over time. Since the creams share the same materials with these Akko ones, I wanted to see if these would benefit from being broken in. I don't have a fancy break-in machine or a massage gun, so I took one switch and pretty much... I did this over the course of two and a half weeks, and if I had to estimate on how many actuations I did, I would guess around 10 to 20,000, which actually isn't a lot when it comes to broken in switches. Obviously, this is very unscientific and completely subjective, but what I found is that there is actually a difference in sound and feel. Obviously, I can't demonstrate it on camera, but the broken in switch lost quite a lot of the audible and physical scratch. It still sounds and feels pretty scratchy, but a lot of the resistance that you feel as you press the switch goes away. So I would say if you want to, break these in for a week or two before lubing, but they'll still turn out fine even if you don't break them in once they're lubed. Aside from the one experimental switch, none of the switches that you're about to hear have been broken in. The pinks and the silvers have been lubed with Crytox 205 grade 0 on the stems, with GPL 105 on the springs. The browns here are getting the same treatment on the springs, but the stems are lubed with Tribosis 3203 instead, and the back group of the leaves are lubed with dielectric grease to reduce the ping without affecting the very little tactility that these switches have. For the best result, I personally recommend lubing all the way down so that the whole groove is covered with grease. Shout out Coley for letting me know about this, it's actually a lifesaver. Here's a quick sound test of all the switches, and there'll be full ones at the end of the video if you're interested. In my opinion, both stock and lubed, the palm switches are much better than stock novel key creams. They feel relatively smoother and sound less harsh, for me at least. This is my first time trying stock creams and it sounds a little bit like sandpaper, not very pleasant for the ears. Let's talk individually. The pinks are pretty nice, 
They're very pleasant to type on due to the full travel and long spring causing a faster but not too explosive topping out. Same with the browns. I quite enjoy the nice light tactile bump even though I'm in a bit of a heavy tactile phase at the moment. But the stock acoustics here are less than desired. Definitely use the leaf loop method from before. The silvers are the least scratchy of the three but I think most of that comes from the long pole and shorn travel so you just get less of the keystroke. In this case though it equates to less scratch. Even after their lube, the palm switches still retain some of the scratch similar to their lubed cream counterpart. It's very apparent that it's far from JWK-like smoothness. My thoughts on the Akko palm switches as a whole are pretty simple. If you like at regular Akko CS switches but are 1, willing to break them in, and 2, want to sound deeper, might I say more thocky compared to regular CS switches, these are a pretty solid choice. But if you're new to keyboards or you don't fit the above criteria, I honestly don't see a reason to get the palm switches over the regular CS switches. Akko CS switches are insanely good for the price, rivaled only by JWIX. They're smooth, clacky, and are very budget friendly. I'd argue that instead of paying $17 for 45 of these palm switches, you're probably better off paying that same amount for Akko's hand lube switches like the lavender purples, matcha greens, and so on. Another thing that the original V1 creams are used for is Franken switches. Basically, use two or more parts to make a quote unquote better one. The stems are what we're after here, so here are my findings. I could only make three Franken switches in the form of the cream pockets, ice creams, and the creamer on since I don't have any tangerines on me. The cream pockets and ice creams, no dice. The stem just gets stuck on the bottom housing like the retooled creams. The creamer ons, on the other hand, were able to be made. The pinks are closer to the cream stem, so I'd recommend those if you're interested. But you're probably better off using kale black stems since these are basically V2 cream stems, so most of the Franken switches are off the table anyways. Out of the three switches, my personal favorite would probably be the Palm Silvers. I'm already a fan of the regular CS Silvers and these are just another version of them. The Palm Browns are probably the most unique out of the three. As far as I know, there isn't a light tactile all palm switch on the market right now, so props to Akko for that. From what I've heard, the cream tactiles are more so on the medium to heavy side. If you're wondering which of these three are closest to a regular cream, that would go to the palm pink. But you would need to spring swap for some heavier 70 gram bottom out springs if you're looking to get a true cream experience. Overall, the palm switches are decent and different to their other CS switches, but in this case, I don't think being different is a good thing here. It all depends on what Akko's goal with these switches were. If their goal was to make a budget and in my opinion better cream alternative, then they nailed it. If their goal was to make a switch that was unlike any of the previous releases, then they nailed it. If their goal was to make a switch to succeed the CS switches, then they might have to go back to the drawing board. I'll leave affiliate links to everything in the description if you're interested. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel as these videos take a lot of time and effort to produce. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.